Hi, you're watching my six string journey and in this video I'm going to be doing a review of my last lesson and we're also going to be talking about my new nightmare. Something that I am really, really struggling with. So I'll be right back with that in just a moment. watching Cypher and in this video I'm going to be reviewing my last lesson as I mentioned and yeah it's been a difficult one. Today is the 12th of February 2020. Roughly 53 hours of practice done so about three hours since my last lesson and pretty much all of that practice has been on chords. I'm back to my nemesis again. Now as always the um, music and the tabs are linked in the description below for the lesson. Although I'm having to back out of actually trying to play those tabs that I was given in the lesson uh, because of the issue that I've got. Now I would like to thank everybody that is downloading those tabs and following along and for those of you that have subscribed to the channel it's very very much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed then on this channel I am documenting my journey learning to play the guitar, primarily this guitar, my highs, my lows, the hurdles I have to overcome and how I overcome them, the equipment that I'm using, basically everything to do with my guitar journey. So if you'd like to follow me along, and I hope you will, please hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. It's very, very much appreciated when people do support the channel. So the lesson started off, so the lesson was a week ago, and I normally record my videos at the weekend, but I've actually taken out my lunchtime on Wednesday to do this one, so it's exactly a week since my lesson. And we started the lesson by me plugging in my phone to the amplifier, and I started to play Chasing Cars, so those chords playing along to Alice Lamb's uh, cover. And I'll be honest with you, the first time wasn't great. I got about a quarter of the way in and I messed it up. I don't know why, but when I sit down with Michael, my nerves just go and everything goes wrong. Uh, it's always the same way. So I calm myself down, relaxed and tried for a second time. And the second time was brilliant. On a couple of occasions, Michael had to just sort of rein me in because I was getting a little bit ahead of the, the music, but on the whole, I finished it on a high. It's probably the best I've played it, and I was so, so, so pleased. It was brilliant. Um, however, after that high, things started to go a bit wayward. The question that I was given from Michael after playing Chasing Cars was, great, what do you want to do now? Do you want to do another riff, or do you want to continue to work on chords? My heart said riff. It was just riff all the way. Let's do another riff. I like doing riffs. My brain was sort of saying, well, should I be doing the chords? And then Michael explained that what we're doing with these chords is to continue to build strength in my hand, but more importantly, to be able to move around the, the fretboard. So for instance, moving from the A chord, to the D chord and then up to the E chord for instance. Just being able to move my fingers around more freely was great and I've been working on the three fingers and primarily that's going quite well but what Michael now wants to do is to continue to build on that and introduce my little finger and so the decision was made to go with another round of chords. I tried the chords a few times with him and then we got towards the end of the lesson. It's only a half hour lesson. And I went away thinking, OK, great. I'm going to nail these chords, get them out of the way. And then when I do my next lesson in a week's time, we can move on 
to the um, the riff which will build on the chords that I'm doing all, all this is going to to lead into uh, into a song so the chords that we are doing is the G chord which is your first finger on the fifth string of the second fret your middle finger on the sixth string on the third fret then we have our ring finger or third finger on the second string of the third fret and then your little finger tucked in on the first string of the third fret so we've actually got three fingers now all in that third fret and I'm struggling with this G chord it's driving me insane it's probably harder to do than the D chord that made me give up or led to me giving up the guitar last year and I persevered and I can now do that D chord so I know I will be able to do the G chord but at the moment it is driving me insane it's like this chord is impossible so let me just show you if I just play these out one string at a time that's okay that's dead that's muted okay very often I move my little finger over the fret um, so that that's that was pretty good that time but I need to address these top two fingers and so what I end up doing is just I can't just put my fingers down at the moment and just find the right places I might constantly just moving my fingers around to try and get a good chord so once I get a good chord we'll strum it out and then from the G we then have to move down to the D chord uh, which is down here and then from the D we go across to the A minor which sounded awful then we repeat that with a G the D and then we go to a C chord now, I'm not going to go through all the fingerings for these because I'm not actually going to be doing that during this this particular lesson review because I'm having to take a bit of a step back but for those of you that download the music and the tabs basically what we're doing is G for two beats the D for two beats a minor for a full bar so four beats then we go back and we do G for two beats D for two beats and then we finish up on a C for a full bar of four beats so that's what I should be playing and that's what we're going to work up to but for the moment what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to get a reasonably decent sounding G moving to the D chord whilst using my ring finger as the pivot point so I'm moving my ring finger down and I'm moving my other two fingers over to get a good D chord so whereas before I was using my middle finger as the, the pivot finger we're now using our ring finger so I'll just go through that again so we go with the, the G chord leave our ring finger down bring our other two fingers over and we play that chord so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just practicing moving initially I was practicing without strumming so just coming across and back and as you can see going to the D is not too bad however going to the G is a bit of a nightmare so I was doing that to get the feeling of keeping my ring or my third finger down and I have pretty much got that now that's not too bad but what I found is that when I was then moving my fingers from the D to the G I would then have all sorts of muted strings which was hopeless so yes that exercise was great for getting me to keep my ring finger steady but 
I need to strum to make sure that I'm not muting chords. So now I've moved on from not strumming to now strumming. And of course, each time I put my fingers down, the first thing I do is just make sure that I've got a clean chord. And if I don't, I just need to move my fingers around just so that I've got that clean chord. And you can see just how much trouble, how much trouble I'm having just trying to get this G chord. Even if I just put my fingers down, I tend to be muting. Now one of the things I have noticed is when I play the D chord, I play that with my elbow tucked in. And that's quite a nice chord. It normally is. However, when I play the G chord, I'm finding that what I need to do is to bring my elbow out a bit without bringing my shoulder up, but bring my elbow out a little bit. And you can see the trouble I'm having. It really is a nightmare. I've been trying this for a week, about three hours I've been trying this. fingers off and I put them back on again. When I'm putting my fingers back on I try to do my middle finger first to find that high E string, sorry the low E string, the sixth string here, then my first finger and then my third and small finger. Not too bad that time. But you can see all my fingers are going down one at a time. I'm having to adjust everything. And still. Still just struggling. And as for changing between the chords, that's something that I'm aspiring to at the moment but struggling with. And although that sounds reasonable, that's the first time I've hit that chord. Wow. That's the first time I've hit that chord straight away without muting strings. In a week of practicing. I won't do it again. Oops. See? So this is something that I think I'm going to have to continue to work on. Just moving from the G chord to the D chord and just make sure each time... That's not too bad. Just making sure each time that I am getting clean strings as I'm strumming them. Slightly dead on there, my fingernails just catching that one. that I've done in the week I've been practicing which is really strange the fact I'm now on camera that things are actually going a little bit better um, I've still got a lot of work to do but I'm almost getting to the point where I could start to do my one minute changes now I will need to do one minute of clean so fingers off 
back on for one minute. Off, back on. And just practice that for a minute. Again, just muting that uh, fifth string. And then I'll move on to a minute of the changes. So one, two, three, four, five, and I'll just count them up. But anyway, that's, um, that's what I'm practicing at the moment. So keeping my ring or my third finger as the pivot point between the G and the D chords and I'll be going backwards and forwards and I'm going to worry about the A minor and the C chord a little bit later. Well, whether I'll have that for my lesson or not, I really don't know. Um, but that's what we're going to be practicing. Before I finish this video, I just want to touch on a topic that I raised in my video where I was playing along to Alice Lamb's Chasing Cars, her cover of the song. I mentioned in there that I was using her cover rather than the original track by Snow Patrol because of copyright issues and worrying about a copyright strike on my channel and thereby risking actually losing the channel altogether. It takes quite a long time to put these videos together. It takes quite a long time to build up your subscriber count and the watched hours. So you really don't want to risk anything. And some people said, in the comments and some people also contacted me to say well you can use any music on YouTube it doesn't matter well in my mind I think it does um, but the consensus of opinion out there was that maybe I was slightly wrong or just taking things a little bit too literally and that you can use whatever music you like I then put on quite a long comment explaining a few bits and pieces and some people came back and said would I do a video on it, um, had I considered doing a video on it. A lot of people know that I'm involved with photography so copyright comes up a lot in photography and then obviously with music. Now doing a video on copyright is not something that I had thought about doing, it's not something I planned to do, it's not an area that I specialise in. And for that reason, you know, I'm just going to stay well clear of it. However, if you are interested in seeing that video, then please comment in the comment section below on this video. And if I get enough people asking for it, then I'll sit down, I'll do a little bit more research, and then I'll share with you my understanding of the issues, my understanding of why you could be risking your YouTube channel if you just use any old music, and how I go about trying to limit my, um, my exposure to a copyright strike by using music that YouTube have sort of, you know, they aren't saying that you can use it, but it, it's probably safer than using just any old thing. So anyway, if you'd like to see that video, then please comment below. And if I get enough, I'll consider doing it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this video please hit the like button if you haven't subscribed please consider it would be very much appreciated sitting on 995 subscribers today and it would be great to get to the thousand although the watch hours needs to come up but yeah the thousand subscribers would be a, a real milestone so thank you very much and i'll see you on the next video probably in a week's time take care bye bye
have to practice and practice and practice.